Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Noble Forsey here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined from Tampa, Florida. Naji Lopez, currently undefeated, 5-0 and in the pro ranks. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How you doing, Adam? Yeah, very good, thank you. Uh, great to have you with us. Um, so we've been covering a few of the guys on uh, on Pro Box TV. We can see the uh, we can see the uh, uh, the banner behind you there. Um, five and zero. Oh, uh, or originally from Puerto Rico, now based uh, sort of raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Give us the sort of lay of the land about yourself, Naji. Tell us uh, tell us about the beginning of your career and uh who I, you I started with. boxing I, i've been in, introduced to boxing by my dad you know um when i was like eight nine years old but i didn't originally want to start boxing until i you know i started seeing my older brother fight and i just seen it the kids my age fighting and stuff like that so when i was about 10 or 11 i had my first my first amateur fight and then from there i just started falling in love with the sport uh from from 12 to I want to say 20, 21, around there, I've just been winning national tournaments uh, in, in the States and Puerto Rico, back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're I, amateur. I you're amateur. I represent, yeah, I, rem, I represent the USA. I, I represent the team Puerto Rico. Yeah. So how what was your amateur record? You 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 had quite a uh, Quite a good bit of experience there. In it was the like a hundred and a hundred and thirty-five wins and like 10, 11 losses. Wow! So quite quite extensive, yeah. to say the least. Uh, one of the names I saw popping up a lot was uh, Jared Anderson. You fought him. A yeah, few I fought times. him twice. Yeah, I yeah. fought him twice. When I was sixteen and seventeen, I believe. No, yeah. and and did you did you uh, what other sort of heavyweight guys did you come across? fighting in that sort of American amateur system because the American amateur system is pretty it's pretty decent it's pretty deep I fought yeah. a lot of, I it's fought a lot big... of, I fought a lot of uh I fought a lot of talented guys that's that's doing good in the professional ranks right now you know we are just coming up we still young all of us still young you know in the amateurs I all of us just I felt like we 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 learned from each other and we grew we grew and we aged well so you know, yeah. Oh, and why? Why did you choose to uh, uh, turn turn pro at the time you did? Um, you were doing quite well in the amateurs. You're still quite young. You could have maybe gone to the Olympics or something. What was what was the reason? I, I just felt there was time. I just felt there was time to go. I could have I could have went to the Olympics for Team Puerto Rico, but around that time, you know, the pandemic, COVID, it it, mm -hmm. uh, it put a halt to a lot of things at the at the moment. And I felt like the layoff, I just I just wanted to do something big. I felt like it was time to turn pro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, had to take that step forward. Yeah. So so did you turn uh, Pro Box TV? Did you turn pro with Pro Box TV or did they come along later? Yeah. No, this is where I started at Pro Box. Yeah. Uh, I met Gary through through my manager, Tim, Tim yeah. Van Newhouse. My coach is Mark. And Asa Ferre, as soon as I mean Asa, Asa and Mark Mark Ferre, as soon as I got out here, it was like a perfect fit. Like uh when I met them, everything was the chemistry was well right off the jump. And especially when I started training, you know, started at first I was coming back and forth from Atlanta to, to Florida. And then I finally decided, you know what, I'm gonna stay out here. I'm gonna actually move my move my whole move everything. I just got up and moved out here and, and then it just it went from there. I, I felt like it was the perfect fit. Yeah. So tell me about that. That's interesting. I've always had to move for work, like a lot of people. Uh, so I can relate to that, man. Um, I, I, how how difficult was that? Have you Did you have to bring family over or were you able to just, you know, get everything in your car and come down? How, how, tell me about that. I just I just took my car and just came down here. They had... They had <laughs> They had a spot for me ready to move in. I'm like, as long as I got a bed in the gym, man, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, brilliant. So, and yeah, I, and I did bring my, I brought my brother down here. And, you know, we just been, the chemistry with everything was just perfect. My brother doesn't box, but he, he's like my personal, you know. Yeah. 
Like, okay, uh, okay, that's really cool. So, so pro box are really, are really sort of taking you in, and, and you've been fighting on those cards. Um, you had a, you had a, a, a the the name that stands out on your record is Alex uh, Theran, uh, twenty three and six, and then you fought Anthony Stewart, who's um, six and one and two draws, um, and then you fought uh, Jason uh, Monroy. Uh, so when are you when are you out next? You're currently five and zero. Oh. Um, you sort of been doing four and six rounders. What's the sort? Uh, what's the plan for twenty twenty three for for Naji Lopez? I'm getting it cracking. I'm getting the year started next month, February twenty second. Uh, yep. I'll be fighting another six rounder. We looking for an opponent. And as far as my last opponents, I felt like I haven't fought nobody that was just you know that was just easy. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like those were good learning every every fight is a good learning a learning session or a good class you know what i'm saying so yeah i felt like i i felt like i handled them well uh, i felt like the guys that i fought were experienced and it, and it's not it's doing it's doing nothing but helping me you know climb up that ladder yeah well you so, so for this fight next month i'm just looking forward to you know showing improvement showing a Showing a, a, a more improved Najee Lopez and you know making it look easy like I always do. <laughs> Good man. Um, so five five wins, five knockouts. Are you would you consider yourself a knockout artist? Is that is that what we're going for here, or have you just been you just been performing very very well? I just perform. I go. I, I don't. I don't necessarily go in there with the intents to, you know, knock anybody out or. Or I go in there with the bad intentions, of course, but I just go in there and perform. You know, I, I I do what I can do. I, I try to, you know, take my opponent somewhere or give them something they never seen before. And I guess, you know, that's how it ends. You know, they they, they don't last. They drown. You know what I'm saying? So. Good. Well, it certainly appears so so far. Um. Uh. What 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 were your inspirations getting into boxing? Who who sort of inspired you to 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 take this up? Um, like I said in the beginning, at first it was my older brother. Then you know, and just start starting to get into him. I started to look at boxing a little bit more. Um, my dad was big on Tito Trinidad. I was I was, I used to love him as a kid, and I still do. That's one of my favorite fighters. And as I got more into it, you had Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Leonard, Muhammad Ali, of course. Um. And then, you know, growing up, Andre Ward. So it's a, it's a handful of guys that really, like, I, I, I always tuned into and tried to grab from from them and, and and learn some of their, not necessarily, like, the way they fight, but learn a lot of their habits, a, a lot of their, you know. So. Hmm. Have you, uh, in your sort of first year and year, year or so as a professional, have you been rubbing shoulders with any sort of good names, people you, you you've you've learned a lot from, um, you know, sparring and and obviously there's another cruiserweight, Brandon Glanton. He's he's with the same promotional outfit as you, in the same uh, weight category. Anything like yeah. that? Yeah, me, man, man, me and Brandon go back to when I was like 14. Um, you know, he's from Atlanta as well. Okay, so I, I knew I knew Brandon since the beginning you know what i'm saying so that's just that's just automatic i put over a thousand rounds with brandy glanton yeah but of course with him super huge huge learning lesson um he's a dog uh a lot of other guys um hot rod 175 um it's a lot of guys it's, it's more than i can name you know what i'm saying but yeah. It, all of them as as just being in it's been an honor just being in the ring with a lot of them guys just learning as I'm coming up just picking up stuff and you know just adding adding to my bag okay well, brilliant brilliant um what's the plan for your your professional career like what's the end goal for all this are we looking are we are we looking to go all the way Naji? what what's your what's your of aspirations course. Of course, we're going all the way. I would have never started, uh, but you know the end goal just being one of the one of the greatest fighters. 
yeah. that I can be. You know what I'm saying? It, it ain't. I feel like if it was anything else, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. I just want. I want to be the best. And as far as being a cruiserweight, I'm gonna. I'm gonna definitely work my way back up. But I've. Uh, I know you know recently I, I took some time off. My, I've been diving into my health, um, my weight, and just adapting more as a professional. So I was able to you know just find my true weight. I, I cut down my fight next month. I start campaigning at 170, 168 around there. Um, you know, I feel like that's where I'm. That's where I'm strongest at. Okay, very way, super middle. Like heavyweight between them, yeah. So what, that, that is my, that's my plan, of course, to go up and snatch titles at every weight class. Okay, wow, interesting. Um, so so you'll go, you're you're going to come all the way, you're going to go down to like super middle and then work your way, work your way back up. Yeah, that's the that's mm -hmm. the plan. Definitely. Oh, good man. I'm very excited. Um. Um, and then, so your next fight, what, what are you going to go? That's a big jump down from, are you, what, are you going to go down from cruiser to light heavyweight? Are you still, you're still in that, that sort of tight, that, no, that I, moment of dropping down? No, I'm not, I'm not even seeing that anymore. Like, I, I'm, I, like I told you, I'm walking around, walking around 180. Yeah. 180, 181 right now. It's, I, I feel stronger. I feel healthy. I feel faster, stronger, leaner. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, yeah, you'll grow into your body more when you uh, when you get older. Well, very interesting. Hundred percent. Very interesting. Um. Uh. So, so talking about um the uh the cruiserweight division, you were talking about uh Brandon uh you Blanton, their fellow at the moment cruiserweight. Uh, he had a big fight on the channel you work for against David Light, who's now found himself in a position to fight um Lawrence Acoli. Firstly, let's um let's get your opinion on that on that fight between uh, Brandon Glanton and David Light. I, I thought that was a that was a that was a great fight. Um, yeah, that was a great fight. Brandon of course, I was rooting, the, uh, of, course of course, I was rooting for Brandon, but I tip my hats off to David Light. He fought a good fight. Um, but personally, I feel like Brandon did what he had to do to pull it. Mm. But I watched the fight like two, three more times. It was super close. I felt like. Depending on the, the how the judge felt that night, I felt like depending on what they was looking at, they could have gave it both sides. But me personally, I felt like Brandon did enough to get the decision. But you know, he didn't. It's boxing. You know what I'm saying? So I, I definitely tip my hats off to David. Like he showed, he was the better man at night. Okay, brilliant. Well, what do you think happens in the uh, the Akoli match, David Light Akoli? You think people are under underestimating David Light? Maybe. Uh, I can't say. I just hope he. Well, I don't. I really don't. I really don't care. But he just better show up that night. You know what I'm saying? Like that's it. It's boxing. You know what I'm saying? Made the best man win. He just better show up that night. I know Lawrence Cody is is not there to just give his title away. He's gonna lay it all on the line that night. So David Light just got to be the best him he can be on that night. So. No problem. Thank you, Najee. Thanks for your 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 insight into that. Well, uh. I think that brings an end to the interview. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for speaking a second. Sir. Thank you for having me. Maybe we do another one after the fight. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, maybe get, get you on just before your fight. And yeah, um, we'll check in with you after. But yeah, we'll get you on all the time, man. And um, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you, man. Thank you.